Hi again, let's continue talking about our CSS stuff here, CSS positioning, right? And, um, you know, we've got our button here and we've got these things that are centered in the screen, but let's, let's uh, present a problem and then try and solve it, right? What if we had two buttons here? Now, my solution right now with this button is using margin auto to, uh, to center the button, right? Let me find the button here. Here he is, right? And so, you know, it's the margin on the left and right that's pushing it into the middle. If I had two of these, this solution doesn't really work, and we need a better solution, right, or a different approach, right? So let's, let's go do that. So I'm going to go into my, my content here, and you can see I've got a parent element there, and then I have this button inside there. So I really I want to have this container that I can center, and then I'll just put two of these buttons inside the container side by side. So I'm going to copy that button, and I'll make a second one. Now, this one needs to have a different ID. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one, um, how about reset button? And then I'll, make, I'll give this top one a better name, too. I'll call it start button. They can both share the same class name. That's okay, but the IDs need to be unique. And since I changed this name to start button from my button, I'll have to go down here and change this to start button too. Or anywhere else I referred to start button as an ID, I, I would have to change that, right? And, you know, this paragraph doesn't really make a lot of sense for me anymore. I really think a div, you know, just a generic container is probably better for our case now. Okay, so I'll make that a div. And then I'll give this this container a class name. I'll call it, you know, how about um, button container. There we go, right? So now we've kind of got our setup. So I got two buttons. Maybe I'll change the text on this one to reset, right? I got two buttons inside of a div. Okay, so now when I do that and I save, my two buttons are going to be on top of each other because they're both um, block level elements and they both have margin auto, so the margin fills up the space, right? There's really no space in here because the margin is filling that up, okay? So to get them to sit side by side, we're going to do this, okay? We're going to go up here and find the timer button class, right, in our style rules, and we'll use this property called float, Okay, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do it with float just to, sh to get you started on float. Float deserves a long discussion, so we won't be able to cover it all just in this video. I'll talk more about float later, um, but this will just get you started. So when I save that and I reset, you can see this isn't quite what we expected, but the, the buttons are side by side. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, when we floated the button, what the browser does is, you know, normally block level elements stack up vertically, and normally they, if you don't give them a width, they just expand to fill their container. Um, floated elements take a different, a different route, okay? Um, and floated elements, the browser can calculates their position differently from everything else, okay? So what happens is this: um, other elements that are not floated ignore the two floats. That's why this box is not, you know, um, wrapping around these guys at the bottom. It doesn't recognize the height of these. Okay, so it just goes down to about here. I don't know why exactly it got to here, but it's kind of ignoring the height of these two things because they're floated. They're not part of the normal flow or the normal layout. Okay, next, the browser takes the floated element, and if it's floated left, it kind of starts on the right side and pushes it up as far as it can go until it bumps into an element up here. So essentially this guy's bumping into the bottom of the H1, and then it slides it all the way over as far as it can get to the left side, because it's floated left. And then if you have any other floats, like let's say this button, the browser does the same thing. Takes it all the way on the right, pushes it up until it bumps into something, and then slides it all the way over until it bumps into another floated element. Okay, so then these two guys recognize each other. So floats recognize each other. Um, Non-floated elements don't recognize the floated elements, okay? So let's do a couple things. So I don't like the space right here, or the lack of space. I want a little bit of space around these guys. So maybe I'll go into my timer button here. I set the margin to auto, and this is the margin for all four sides. Okay, so 
um, if I put a value here, maybe I'll do 10 pixels, right? If I do this, what's going to happen is the margin here is going to set 10 pixels margin on the top and the bottom, and then the margin on the left and right is going to be auto. So this is the top and bottom margin, and this is the left and the right, okay? So now we'll have 10 pixels margin left or top and bottom, right? Wait a minute. Wait, actually, you know, I made a mistake there. I actually want to do just that, you know, or maybe this. Or actually maybe, how about zero on the top and bottom and 10 pixels on the left and right, okay? There we go. Let's look at that one more time. I kind of went past that. Yeah, this is what I want to do. Margin left and right if 10, um, margin top and bottom of zero, okay? Oh, so now we've got 20 pixels here because this is 10 on this guy and 10 on this guy. Let's go examine them, right? There we go. 10 pixels left and right, 10 pixels left and right, okay? And now I want this box to, I want to use the container here, the button container, to move this group, right? Because this, this guy kind of counts as like a group for the two buttons, right? He's kind of a container for them. I want to use that to move these guys into the middle, okay? And also hopefully set the size of, of the container box, okay? So what we'll do is we'll um, get the container style here, the class name, and we'll make a rule for it. And we'll have to do a little bit of math, Okay, so how big, if you remember the box model question, essentially what I want to do is I want to give this a width that's equal to, you know, the, the two buttons and their margin and border and padding, okay? And then I want to set the height equal to the height of my buttons, okay? So let's go calculate that, okay? So how do I calculate it? Well, you can, you can add the numbers up here or we can look in the inspector, right? So if I look at the button here, you'll see that the button says that it's, um, let me switch this back to computed styles. It says it's um, 60 pixels, right? So it says 60, actually it says 68. No, it's a 60, right? Okay, um, but essentially it's 40 pixels wide plus 10 plus another 10. So actually, it's a little bit bigger because that number there that in the yellow box is not including the margin, I think. So if when I look at this, it's going to be 40 plus 6 plus 4, that's 50, plus 10, that's 60. And then there's another 10 and another 20 on the other side. So it's um, 40 plus 20 is 60 plus another 20 is 80. Right? And then the other one should be the same size. So if we set the width here to 160 pixels, right? That should set the width. And now the height. Let's go calculate that, right? So we'll take a quick look here. It's 47 plus 6 is 53 plus another 7 is 60. So height of 60, right? So, and the both of the buttons should be the same. So we'll say height, 60, okay? And then we'll refresh here. And now you can see that this box, like when I look at it, it just contains the two buttons. Now it looks a little bigger on the left and right because we have to take into account that those two buttons have 10 pixels margin on, their, on the left and the right side, right? So, um, so anyway, so we've got that guy. So now that we've given this a width, you can go back to your original idea that we talked about and we can set the margin to auto, right? And then that'll move the button container into the middle of its container, right? And now our buttons are in the center, okay? So anyway, so thanks for watching and I hope that gives you some ideas on how you might work with the, um, with, uh, the box model, which is, you know, width, height, padding, border, and margin, okay?